Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today I have the Acura NSX up on quick jacks because I am going to do some paint repair on the front splitter. If you're new to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I like producing cool car content. And also be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps. Let's take a closer look at this front splitter so I can fill you in on exactly what I plan to do to fix it. So here is the front splitter on my 2017 Acura NSX, and when I bought it, it had 20,000 miles on it. Of course, the previous owner had daily driven the car. So there are rock chips that are on the dry carbon. What they call dry carbon is actually a matte finish. So like, for example, right in here, right in here, etc. rocks had hit this and of course bounced off and it exposed another layer underneath what appears to be matte paint. So I wanted to figure out an easy way to fix this without replacing the entire splitter because this is several thousand dollars. And of course I've been doing some experimenting and I actually found a method that works. In fact, oh, can I find it? Yeah. If we look at a certain angle like right here, we could see just above my finger there's an area right there where the light's reflecting. Well, that is a chip that I filled with paint. I actually found a matte paint that is hard to see unless you're looking at the right angle. So knowing that that chip is right here and moving up above where you would normally you know, look down on the car or look at the front splitter, maybe kneeling, it's nearly impossible to see. You literally have to have a light on the ground in a different location in order to catch the reflection. So this took a lot of experimenting. I went out and I purchased different kinds of paint. I went online, tried to find matte paint, eggshell paint, etc. <laughs> Let me show you what actually worked for me. This is Rust-Oleum Matte clear. <laughs> I found this at Walmart and you could find it pretty much anywhere. And I only bought it to test it out. And no, I didn't spray it on here and do anything else like that. I ended up spraying this into another container and then using a tiny little brush in order to fill the chip with paint. <laughs> and this actually works. There are other chips in here. I know that there's one right here that we could see from this angle, but I mean, once you're looking at it from above, forget it, it's not standing out. This is not a perfect match for the mat that's on this car. In fact, this is a little bit duller. It has a little bit more of a white in it, sort of that, the matte texture. So it's not perfect for taking a, a large section. So you don't wanna like tape this off and then paint it because you're not gonna be able to get this to match perfectly but it is good for spot fixes. So let's walk through the process. I'm gonna take this particular chip here and this one here, and I'm gonna fill them with this matte paint. The first step, of course, is to make sure the surface is clean. Now, I already washed the car, and I also treated each one of these chips with this alcohol. This is 91% alcohol. So I put this in a small squirt bottle and I squirted it onto the area and I used a microfiber towel and just wiped it. So now there's nothing left behind at all. Next, I'm gonna take a closer look at this actual chip. And if you could see here, there's a white section down here and a white section at the top around the chip. It may be difficult to see. That means that this area is actually lifted away from the surface underneath. And if I go ahead and try to put paint on this, the paint may not actually seep into that area and it could stay white. So I wanna remove that. So I'm just gonna go straight on and just take those little pieces of white out by making this chip bigger. There we go. So I wanna to continue to do that on all of these little chips that are white. That way, once I get that surface completely exposed underneath, then I can add the paint. Now what I'm doing is I'm making sure not to stick my knife up under and pry out because that can actually make it worse. So this is the process of actually going around the chip and I'm just trying to break this chip off 
and then send it more inbound to eliminate the white areas. And then that way I could put the paint in here and I won't have any more white areas exposed. Okay, now that I've used my knife and I've gotten rid of all the white areas, now all we have is holes. And the next best thing to do is to go ahead and prepare the surface so that the paint can stick to this. And if you get some type of a paint pen, sometimes it comes with this little top up here to create a scratch. And you can also find these online. I'll have a link in the description below. But it's good just to get in here and just scratch up the surface a little bit underneath so that the new paint has something to stick to. So I'm just going to go through all these little holes that I just expanded and make sure that I scratch the surface underneath. That way I have a new surface for the paint to stick to. Now that I've gone ahead and made sure that I have a surface that the paint will stick to, I can commence with the next step. So I've taken some lacquer thinner and I put it in the container because as I'm painting I may need to clean up my brush and this is my brush. There'll be a link in the description below. This just has a tiny fuzzy head on it, about one millimeter. And the whole point of this is to take this and just lay the paint right in that hole and then add more paint to it. So how do I get paint on this? I take my spray can and I spray it into a container. I chose a glass container so you can raid the house, china closet, whatever. Put your uh, paint in here. You don't need much. Just spray a little bit in there and then we're good to go. Now I do have my mask here and I'm going to put that on because as I spray I'm going to get some vapors in the air. I don't want to inhale that. And I'm also not going to do it right here in front of the car. So let me do that off camera and come back and we'll commence with the next step. Okay, now that I've put a little bit, and I mean a little bit of paint into this container, I'll just take my brush, dip it in there, and load it up so it's ready to go. I'll just start at the very top of this chip, and I'll just allow the paint to fall down. I mean, literally, it is uh, tension that's pulling this down. I'm really not painting it on. I'm barely touching it, and I'm trying to stay within the confines of the chip. And there, I've already filled that one up. So I'm just going to continue down the line here, doing the same thing, let gravity help me. Yeah, that one filled perfectly. And on to the next one. Okay, so I've finished putting as much paint on it as I want to for right now. And I'm just going to put my uh, little brush here into this uh, container with lacquer thinner in it and then dry it out. But let's take a look at this angle. Let me show you what's happening here. So here's our biggest chip. And as you can see, it's dull in there. And as that paint dries, it actually gets a tiny little bit of a shine to it. So it looks more like this. But if you're standing up at a vertical angle looking straight down, you really can't see it unless you're really looking for it. So most people are going to stand, at least my car is two feet off the ground right now. Uh, most people are going to stand about here. Let's see, I'll bring the light overhead. I'm trying to see if I can find the chip, and I can't because it's in the very front of the splitter and it's very very hard unless we get down low ah there it is I can see them there huh so this is working pretty well in order to disguise these so they don't look like chips obviously the chips are still there obviously this is not the highest quality paint that I'm using but it works and that's because I tried it like I said I had tried it here and uh, here and here and I just decided you know with this test before I go on film can I actually make them disappear and they're practically gone so once this paint starts to dry a little bit I can then continue to add a little bit more because I want to try to get this as full with paint as possible of course spray paint dries pretty quickly because it's very thin so I'll just give this a couple more minutes and I'll go back over these with another coat so I've already put two coats on and it is looking fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and let this 
really sit for probably about an hour or so. I'll come back and I'll continue to build up. So what I want to do is try to get as much paint in the chip as possible and I don't want the paint to run down the rest of the carbon fiber. So as we can see, I have my light off to the side there, that the paint is inside the chip. It's completely inside the chip and I'm just going to continue to add to that so that over time I can fill that and then from an angle like up here you can't see it anymore. So I think this quick trick really works in order to hide these rock chips in the spoiler itself. And there's probably another method out there for dry or matte carbon that works just as well. But this seems to do the job for me on this Acura NSX. So I'm gonna continue to do this anytime I get a rock chip in this thing. Now obviously if this was a gloss finish, it would be much easier to do where we could either use paint or we could re-epoxy it. But with a matte finish like this, well, we're stuck with what we got. It's either replace the part or experiment. So I think this worked out pretty well. If you liked today's video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I like producing cool car content like this. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.